My name is Officer Peter Lashley. I'm the lead UAS DFR pilot for the Santa Monica Police Department. We started our UAS program in 2015, and that was with a single drone that one of our officers purchased on his own. We saw the benefits from it shortly thereafter and started evolving with a series of smaller drones. But now we're into our full DFR program, and we've been running that for about the last 18 months. And when you explain DFR, it seems like an obvious fit with policing and the way that it benefits agencies today. You explain to someone we want to utilize drones in this way, a remote teleoperation. It's easy for an agency to say, well, we already have a drone program. Is this really going to benefit us? But once you really see it and you talk to the patrol officers at these agencies and how it's important it's become to them and the way that they conduct policing, it's a no brainer. We had some wonderful successes within the first week of the program. But we had a call come out of a teenager on the sidewalk pointing a gun at somebody on the sidewalk. We got the drone on scene, observed the described individual. He was with a couple of other people. As we watched the subject pull what appeared to be a semi-automatic handgun out from their sweatshirt, it looked completely legit. Without any perspective of the drone, it's sort of your worst nightmare as a police officer. But as we watched them, that at least the ones we had observed appeared to be airsoft or some type of of you know, non-lethal firearm. The ground officers having that information it was just invaluable. The officers were immensely appreciative and across the board, it was a huge success. For DFR, we're exclusively running the M300 platform. We have two. We'll utilize DFR for any call that we feel we can benefit the officers on the ground. Even for such a small city, our call spectrum spans from shots fired to quality of life noise disturbances. So we do operate under a COA. We operate our entire city is covered by Santa Monica Municipal Airport's Class D airspace. But the majority of the aircraft that we interact with is rotary wing helicopters. So it presents a real challenge to operate and integrate within the airspace and do that safely. To mitigate that, we have qualified RPIC on the roof. We currently use Flying Lion, our uh, personnel on the roof, and they do a fantastic job. Our community was aware that we were utilizing drone technology and they had seen some of the benefits of it. We did recognize that bringing DFR on board was going to be a, a fundamental shift in the frequency, visibility, and that meant communicating to our city partners at City Hall. We also reached out to community groups, explained what the program was, what the benefits to them as our residents. A very positive response. We completely recognize that there are privacy concerns. We have safeguards in place oversight so that we don't ever misuse or betray the trust of the community has placed in us. Our partnership with the lecture has been fantastic. It, just from providing us with the equipment in a timely manner to it, just have a wonderful relationship for support, for technical questions, it, fantastic experience with the company itself. I would say if you're gonna try and start a program, try and go in seven days a week. Every agency I believe in the country is dealing with some sort of staffing issue. So it's not always easy to just throw two officers at a brand new program. We've helped numerous agencies, you know, with their questions, trying to get their head around it. It's a really complex program to do it right. But seek out information, don't do it in a, in a vacuum. Patrol is the hardest working entity in any police department. And to hear them come back and say thank you, and knowing that the drone is overhead, is gonna support them. And if something goes wrong, and know that help is gonna come because the drone has their back as their partner.